All right, people up, I got once again, good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to be with each of you here and those of you able to join us on our live stream. Happy day to you as well. So we did indeed kick off our Red Letter Challenge series last week. It includes this book. Did we get started on it this week? Yeah, awesome. So we should be a couple days into it. Today kicks off uh, day six. So if you're following along, awesome. If this is your first Sunday here or first Sunday back in a little while, this is what we're going to be working through for these next 40 days or so. You can find these at the welcome desk in the lobby. And the vision is really simple. We think there's a lot of power in drawing near to Jesus at this time of year and the preparation for the season of Lent and Easter, um, but also because we believe in the Bible is where God clearly and powerfully speaks to us. And so the more we get close to his word and the more it's a part of our daily lives, the better off you and I are going to be. So the vision would be that book is kind of on your kitchen table or in your kitchen or at your workspace or next to a comfy chair in your house, along with your Bible, because there's also value in reading the Word of God from your own Bible, and that over the course of these next 40 days or so, that you're going to be changed by spending time with Jesus and His Word. So we're going to today actually get into some of those words of Jesus, but before we do that, let me lead us in a prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, it is our desire that we might draw closer to you. And thank you, God, that you meet us. You come down to us. That you and your word, you've made yourself known to us who you are and your power for our daily lives. God, open up, we pray, not only your scriptures to us, but our hearts and minds that we might be receptive to where you're going to lead us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, I'm going to read to you a part of the Bible, just three verses. These are dynamite power punched verses. Um, and I'm going to tell you the context off the bat here. We are in Matthew chapter 11. And by the time we've gotten to Matthew chapter 11, we're you know, pretty much halfway into the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. By now, the disciples of Jesus who have been tracking with him, they've seen him do miracles. They've seen him profoundly teach. And so they're really starting to get a handle on who Jesus is, but they're kind of trying to come to grips with not only who he is, but what that's going to mean for them and how that's going to really augment their lives. And so Jesus has this word for them. Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Again, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. I don't know if there's words of the Bible I like more than that, (laughs) right? These are words you want to put on a Christian coffee mug or a bumper sticker or make them into a song and a hymn because you and I, we are tired. (laughs) Anybody tired by life? (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of things about life that make you and I tired. Schoolwork. Work demands, kids' needs, to-do lists, medical or financial or relational uncertainty, the news of the world, they can all have us feeling exhausted. Yet I want to tell you right now that that's not exactly what Jesus is talking about here. He's not talking to the disciples about, hey, I know you just get tired by the burdens of life and all your demands. No, he's actually talking about something different. Tired of weary and burdened with your spirituality. And here's how I know that to be true. Later on in Matthew's gospel, Jesus is going to say something really similar. It's Matthew chapter 23. We're going to put the words on the screen so you can track along. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his his disciples, 
The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But they do not but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Key word here. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. That word yoke that Jesus uses in Matthew chapter 11 would have been really common in first century Jewish culture in order to express someone's kind of obligation to God. Your yoke was kind of the burden that you carried in your relationship with God. It was common to speak about your yoke with God. It was what you had to do. There was the yoke of the law and fulfilling it. The yoke of the, the, yoke of the commands. The yoke of repentance. The yoke of faith. And just the general yoke of God. It was the burden that Matthew 23 records was kind of the bar across their shoulders. So in this context here of Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is kind of simplifying it all to them and says, hey, forget everything you thought of and you thought you knew about the yoke that exists between you and, and God, the burden that you carry with God. Take my yoke, a new yoke upon you and learn from me and there you're gonna find rest. Bottom line, friends, there was a, a burden before God that people in the first century felt, and Jesus identifies it. And I think you'll agree with me, that burden is still felt by so many today. Perhaps you've even felt it. I'm guessing you have. And that burden is really the answer to this question. Am I doing enough for God? Like, when it comes to my relationship with God, am I doing enough? Am I doing what he demands? And it feels like a burden that's placed upon us. And we can settle, really, on one of two answers to that question. I'm going to tell you, both of those answers are kind of problematic. Because think about it. You could answer that question and feel like you're doing a lot, and you're really proud of it. Good news, that's a problematic answer. Or bad news, that's a problematic answer. Or you could feel like you're not doing a lot and you feel guilt or shame around it. And that's also problematic. So then our text, Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden by this burden of, of trying to do everything that you think I demand of you. Come to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. It's really not that hard. Our family at Christmas time decor decorates a Christmas tree that is pulled up from our basement. Anyone want to boo me on that? Okay, thank you. And, and let me tell you how that usually goes. It's a pretty large Christmas tree. We still have the original box, and it is disassembled and assembled from four big parts. But it never really fits back in the box. You know what I'm talking about? So in the back of the storage room of our basement is this large box with these four parts that kind of overflow out of it. And every year, we go, when we decorate for Christmas, to the back storage room of our basement, and just track with me here, and maybe you know where this is going. We would pull the box out of the back of the storage room and kind of navigate it through our basement. And this is a very large box with the Christmas tree kind of spilling out of it. So then we'd have to like push it up the stairs. This is not the most romantic of moments, okay? Because I'm on the bottom of the stairs pushing this box up the stairs. She's at the top of the stairs pulling the box kind of up the stairs. Then we get to the top of the landing of where our basement kind of goes to our main floor. And that's a really tight room. So pushing this box through that really tight room, then we emerge kind of to the center hall of our house, which is a really tight 90 degree turn. So we have to like lift up this box to kind of pick it around. Then we finally get it to the room. It's like, oh, 
Now we can decorate the Christmas tree. Something happened this year. Maybe you know where this is going. We went down to the basement around Thanksgiving weekend, and we looked at the box. Now, I'm a fairly smart person. I'm a college graduate. My wife is really quite bright, in my opinion. And she looked at it and said, guess what? What if we didn't take the whole box up? (laughs) But instead, we just carried the parts one by one up from the back of the storage room. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. And we looked at each other, and we were like mortifiably embarrassed that for every year we've set up our Christmas tree, we've moved this box up the stairs. So here's what we did. We each grabbed one of the sections and just walked up the stairs and then got to the landing and just turned like this. And it took all of about 70 seconds. And we looked back and said, do you remember how difficult it was? Like, why did we make something that should be so easy, so unnecessarily difficult? And I tell you that to tell you this. I want you to know today that your life with God is not dependent upon his performance. I'm sorry, it's not dependent upon your performance, but upon his. Your life with God is not dependent upon your performance, but upon his. As much as we try to make it about like pushing that box up the stairs and around the corner and doing all this hard thing, in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, why are you doing that? This is not our life together. My life with you, the Lord says, is not based on how hard you're working for me, but upon what I've done on your behalf. And you heard Tim read this in Hebrews chapter 12. I'd like to look at it again in light of what we've just talked about. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And how do we do that? Verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. Meaning he's the one who made it, and he's the one who completely perfects it and delivers it for you. And how did he do that? For the joy set before him, joy, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think about those key words, fix your eyes on Jesus. It is so easy and so tempting for us to fix our eyes on ourself and how we think how we're doing with God. You're invited today to set that completely aside. Quit trying to carry the Christmas tree box up from the basement and simply fix your eyes on Jesus who did it all. And I'm going to tell you, that's why I'm so excited we're doing the Red Letter Challenge. Because when you draw near to Jesus, you are drawing near to the one who delivers those words, come to me all you who are weary and burdened by your broken sense of spirituality, and come to me who says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why? Because I have accomplished everything for you. Your life with me is not based on your performance with me, but on my performance and what I've accomplished for you. I want to close with this. I got to visit with some folks this week who don't often get to go to church in person. I want to tell you quickly about one of those conversations because it was a meaningful conversation. They all were, but one was in particular. She said two interesting things. We got to visit together and kind of catch up, and then First thing she said that was meaningful was, boy, your hair is getting more gray. (laughs) She hadn't been in person for a while, so I guess maybe the coloring on the TV makes it look browner than it is. 
She's like, your hair's looking a lot more gray. I said, thanks a lot for that. But then she said, don't color it. She's like, it looks distinguished. What do you think? <laughs> Sounds like we're not sure on that one. <laughs> but then she said, after that nice introduction, so what made you want to become a pastor? I'm going to just give you the 30 to 60 second answer. I'm really thankful to have a mom and a dad who brought me to church when I was a little kid. And when they brought me to church, they brought me to a place where I was loved by a lot of adults, including my pastor, who were not my parents. I had Sunday school teachers and youth group leaders and VBS leaders and just people in the church who cared about me as a human being. And they were very patient with a very restless 11-year-old boy, me. And when I grew up in the high school, they really cared about how I was doing in sports, and they came to my games and really were, like, really personally invested in me. And I want to tell you that because when you do that here, I see that here. When you have conversations with kids, when you teach in Sunday school, when you're generous and patient and kind with our kids. It makes a seismic difference in how they understand the church and therefore how they understand God and Jesus. And then as I grew up and got into high school, I did not have a lot of Christian friends. And I saw that a lot of my friends, people that I really loved and care about, didn't have a church that loved them like I had in a church that loved me. And they also didn't have a sense that they were actually created by God and that they were loved and forgiven by him. And that, you know, I had a sense of a personal anchor and a grounding in who God declared me to be in Jesus Christ that I'm not sure a lot of my friends did. I said, but I wanna spend my life helping people get that. This week, in our Red Letter Challenge, the focus is going to rally around one word, being. And I want to just take note what it's not. It's not doing. It's just first being. And recognizing that you are a child of God, not based on your performance, but rather solely based on who God has declared you to be. And this week is all about, and you heard Susie talk about, just sitting and resting in that reality. And then everything we're going to talk about in subsequent weeks builds off of that sense of your identity, that God declares who you are. And just like I wanted my friends to have that, I want you to have that. And if you're joining us on our live stream, I want you to have that. I want you to embrace and hold fast to the words of Jesus who says, come to me, all you who are weary and your burdens, and I will give you rest. For my yoke, Jesus says, is easy, and my burden is light. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen.